Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the worship of St. Paul's United Methodist Church, a compassionate community led and transformed by the Spirit. Welcome to all you brave souls who are here in person this morning, and welcome to the many folks who are participating in worship through our streaming service. We are glad to have each and every one of you here. I am Reverend Becky Sweet, and I am delighted to serve as your senior pastor. Our worship leadership, faithful as they are, um, for whom we are very grateful, includes today our ushers, our liturgist, Mary Lou Slattery, Molly McMillan, our pianist, who I believe has a wonderful sense of humor. Did I hear you play? The weather outside is frightful. And the fire is so delightful. Let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. That was at the very beginning of the prelude, if you were paying attention. <laughs> Thank you, Molly. Um, Maya Finkel is our song leader and will be providing some special music along with Caitlin Gastonbury, who we welcome here this morning. Also, Tigran Chattertayan is our camera operator. David Kingsley is our technical director. Um, Jamie Breedlove Crouch is our Loving Care Ministries coordinator, and she is safe and warm at home today. Dee Levine is our church administrative assistant and communications coordinator, and we are thankful for the rest of the staff who have supported the preparation for this day, as well as those who gave the sidewalk another cleaning when they arrived here this morning. I extend a special welcome to those who are worshiping online and ask if you are viewing through our church website, please go down to the virtual friendship pad on the worship page and complete that. Or for those who are watching via Facebook Live, you may scroll down and leave a comment for others who are joining you there. Just a reminder, we have an additional candle on the altar as a visual reminder to pray daily for peace around the world, peace in Ukraine and Russia, in the Gaza Strip, in Armenia and Azerbaijan, in the Congo and in surrounding countries in Africa, and for all those who are at war or are dealing with violence or the threat of violence in their lives. I'm just skipping down over some of our announcements today. I'm glad our teachers are here for Curious with Christ. Um, we deal with the weather, but thank you for your faithfulness in being here today anyway. Today, we are celebrating Epiphany, marking the journey of the Magi and their entourage following a star to find the one born to be king of the Jews. In the midst of our worship, we will also share the sacrament of Holy Communion. So for those who are worshiping with us from home, you may want to have some bread and juice ready so that you may share in the sacraments right along with us at that point in the service. So as we continue to worship today, um, I invite you to rise as you are able and greet one another with a holy wave or a sign from my heart to yours as we share love and peace with all. And let's turn and face the cameras in the back of the sanctuary and greet folks at home saying, Happy Epiphany! And you may be seated. May we focus our minds and our hearts on God's love and care as Molly offers to us the centering music.
As you are able, I invite you to rise for the call to worship. You will find it printed in your bulletin, and I would ask you to respond where you see the bold print. We gather wondering, where will we find the babe born in Bethlehem? We gather asking, where will we find the child of Christmas? We gather wanting to know, where will we find the Christ who has come for us? May we sing together hymn number 249, There's a Song in the Air. be seated. The scripture reading today is from Isaiah 60 verses 1 through 6. Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will arise upon you and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you, your son shall come from far away and your daughters shall be carried in their nurses' arms. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice, because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nation shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you, the young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. And from Matthew 2, verses 1 through 12. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem, asking, 
Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star in the east and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened and all Jerusalem with him. And calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. They told him in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet. And you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the Magi and learned from them the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word so that I may go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there ahead of them went the star that they had seen in the east, until it stopped over the place where their child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Hello, children of God. As you can see, we have a special visitor here with us who typically only comes to see us once or twice a year, Noel, the camel, along with her flashy eyelashes. So we're glad to have Noel here, and she is reminding us about the wonderful privilege that we have to carry gifts for the Christ child. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't usually keep gold, frankincense, and myrrh laying around. Suzanne, do you have any gold in your house? Yeah. Any, does anyone here have frankincense? Molly, do you have frankincense? No frankincense. Myrrh, anyone have myrrh? No, no. That's, those are things that most humans don't have laying around to use as a gift for someone else. And in Jesus' day, those were still quite exotic gifts. They weren't gifts that just anyone would have in their home. And so we think to ourselves, at least I think to myself, what is a gift worthy of bringing to the child Jesus, the one born to be king of the Jews? So think about that for a moment, because I will ask you for some ideas. You know, there are legends that we have about those who came to the child Jesus and brought things other than gold, frankincense, and myrrh. These are not in scriptures. They are just legends, such as the little drummer boy who, who brought the gift of drum music percussion, and that was his gift to the Christ child. What gifts might we bring for the Christ child? Yes? Give him my heart. Christina Rossetti really captured that essence. We give our heart that for, for Christina Rossetti that was what was of most value and what was most precious that she could offer to the Christ child. Suzanne. Amal brought his crutch. And why did that have such significance for Amal and the night visitors? So he presented before Jesus that which he thought was his only aid in mobility. But 
found perhaps the miracle of healing by being willing to give that up. Hmm. Anything else? Allison. A cooked meal. The casserole. <laughs> yes. What a wonderful gift. Meeting someone's immediate needs. Yes, thank you. Karen? All right. A plug, but in a generous and charitable sense. Our attention. All right. There are a couple of Christmas carols that mention giving to Jesus the song in our hearts, too. You know, that which brings joy to one another. What a blessing it is that we each have been given by God something precious in our lives. That in the midst of faith in the Messiah, we are willing to share with another. Wouldn't it be wonderful if we went through every day doing that, recognizing Christ in one another, and then giving to them that which is precious and has been given to us by God. Would you pray with me? Thank you, giving God, for gifts to share, for love abundant, and the Messiah sent to save us. Help us, please, to be generous in our giving and to be glad to carry those gifts to others. Amen.
Thank you. That was so beautiful. Would you please pray with me once again? Loving God, it is challenging for us to even imagine your love for us in the midst of our sinfulness and our foibles, our misunderstandings, and sometimes even our willful disobedience. But yet you love us so much that you sent a savior to us, the Messiah, whose birth and growing years we celebrate during this season. Bless us with a fresh sense of understanding of how you would have us to live in relationship with Jesus Christ, our Savior. For we pray in his name. Amen. It's epiphany. Well, almost. It's an announcement of stellar proportions, a revelation of the most holy Actually, the reason I said almost, actually yesterday, January 6th, was Epiphany, or Three Kings Day, as some people call it. But we are here celebrating today. This is one of the few celebrations of the Christian year where the same scripture is read year after year after year. Perhaps like the Christmas narrative from Luke, the second chapter, the power of the story actually lies in its familiarity for us. Isn't it true that the things we repeat over and over again to ourselves are those things which often matter the most to us? When you are able to tell a, a loved one, spouse, child, partner, I love you. The more we say it, the more it means to us. When we are able to say to ourselves, God loves me, the more we say it, the more it means to us. The text that Mary Lou shared with us today from Matthew's second chapter is the only place in Holy Writ where we find the account of the journey of the Magi to find the, the child who has been born to be king of the Jews. And while we know the story very well, there is context with which we may be less familiar. From everything that scholars can determine about the Magi, we can safely assume that they were Zoroastrian astrologers who most likely came from Persia. And of course, we know Persia today as Iran. Think about that for a moment and let it sink in. The Magi came from Iran. They brought some unusual gifts, at least the way that we think about gifts to be given to a newborn baby and their family today. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh might not seem like the sort of gift that you or I would take to a baby shower had we been invited to one. Centuries of tradition have assigned some special significance to each of these gifts, Gold, they say, signifies royalty, acknowledging that this child would someday rule as a king. Frankincense was used in the temple to signify that this child was holy and set apart for God's purposes. And myrrh would have been associated with Jesus' death, since it was used to anoint the dead body prior to burial. But when we consider that these astrologers from Iran probably were not as familiar with Jewish traditions and customs and rituals, we recognize that gold was a currency of value in every culture. 
and both myrrh and frankincense were valued for their medicinal purposes. And it's possible that these gifts brought by the Magi were offered for their more practical uses, more than for any symbolic values that we may have assigned to them in our day and age. Gold, frankincense, and myrrh may sound exotic to our modern ears, but in the first century Palestine, they might have just been the equivalent of a gift card or a savings bond. Perhaps more than making a theological statement, the Magi were trying to bring useful gifts to the Holy Family. I'm sure, however, they didn't think about bringing a casserole. But this was not a celebration for just any baby. The Magi had traveled for months to find this baby. They used the word homage in this particular scripture text a couple of times. The Magi made the journey in anticipation of seeing with their own eyes the prophecy being fulfilled. They were looking especially for a king, one who would command respect and honor, a king to whom they could show reverence, a king that they intended to worship and serve. The Magi from Iran were looking for God incarnate, God made flesh, God's promises made real. They were looking for one truly worthy not only of their worship, but of everyone's worship. These foreigners who came from a different country and who followed a different belief system were some of the first to recognize the significance that this birth really held. Sure, we like to talk about the gifts that the Magi bring. I mean, they're included in every Christmas pageant we've ever seen. But what is most significant about the story of the Magi following the star to find the child Jesus was that those who were considered privileged from another country and another culture came to worship the Christ child. There is something else that we should notice about the Magi as they point us to Christ. They didn't get it right the first time. They were looking for the newborn king in Jerusalem, assuming that that must be where the star was leading them. They strayed off course by five or six miles, as that is the distance between Bethlehem and King Herod's palace. If they'd stayed on course, keeping their eyes on the beacon of light leading them to Jesus, Herod may never have felt the threat to his power from this newborn king. Have you ever gotten off course? Truly, I think most of us have, if we're honest with ourselves. Has your life strayed off course, away from seeking God, as you followed after things that seemed good and right at the time, but were really just distractions from the path that God had laid out for you? Have you found yourself headed for a beautiful palace, so to speak, in Jerusalem, when what you really needed to do was to go to little bitty Bethlehem and find God's treasure there among the impoverished? Well, there's good news, especially for those of us who have gone off course sometime or sometimes within our lives. The Magi figured out that they needed a course correction, and they went back to following the star. And when it stopped over the house where the Jesus was, they were overwhelmed with joy. 
We all go off course sometimes, either due to our own decisions to seek after what is seemingly more powerful and influential in this world, or through the circumstances of our lives. Sometimes we get stuck in the traditions of the past that once seemed so glorious. We may, in fact, be standing on the very threshold of God's future for us. And all that we can see when we are looking back is the past, and we miss the light of the star guiding us into the future. Sometimes we even quit looking for the light of Christ, and we just see the dimming shadows of the past. The light of the world, my friends, is shining a way forward for us. The light of the world is shining us a path, shining on a path for us to lead us to new life, not eventually or after we die, but by shining that light that shows the new path of God's purpose for us right now. Jesus is inviting us to see a new way forward. Today we are celebrating Epiphany, the revelation of Christ to the world. Even today, more than 2,000 years after this original account took place, the world is still looking still seeking for the one who can light the way forward. We have come through times that are filled with challenges and disappointments and sorrows. A new year, we haven't quite finished the first week of the new year, a new year makes us eager to celebrate the possibilities that lie ahead of us. As we come to the table of grace today, where bread and cup unite with one another in Christ, Jesus resolves to be our Messiah, not just in the past, not just in the glory days, but in the future, in what is a mystery that lies ahead of us. Jesus will take us to unexpected places. The light may shine in us, on us, and through us in unexpected ways. How will the light of Christ shine through us this year, revealing God's deep and abiding love to others who are around us? Today, we can be agents of epiphany. We can help to reveal what God has in store for us and for the world for the future. We can be a part of the epiphany. So let's not just sit around. Let's go following the star and make it happen this day. Amen. I invite you to sing the first Noel found on page 245 in the United Methodist Hymnal. I know it's five whole verses long, but it tells a wonderful story. So please stand as you are able and let's sing together.
seated. Yes, you heard it right. An announcement of stellar proportions. And that announcement calls us to be agents of God's epiphany. There are so many opportunities to do just that. One of which is through the offering of our gifts to God so that all of our gifts together might shine Christ's love light where there seems to have only been darkness. You may contribute to God's ministries through St. Paul's United Methodist Church in a variety of ways. You may use the donate link on the church's website or mail your offering to St. Paul's United Methodist Church. For those worshiping here on site, our ushers will be delighted to receive your gifts as Molly offers to us a musical offering. Oh, I'm sorry. And Caitlin, too. <laughs> I'm sorry. Thank you.
As we prepare to come before the table of our Lord and share together the sacrament of Holy Communion, I invite you to follow along with the great thanksgiving, um, some of which you will find in your bulletins, and please participate in the responses that you will find there. People of Advent, the Lord be with you. People of Christmas, lift up your hearts. People of the star, offer your songs of joy and thanksgiving to God. In that first moment, you spoke, radiant God, and the light of creation dispelled the thick darkness of chaos. You whispered, and your glory filled the skies. You sang, and the dust of the earth was shaped into your image as you breathed life into us. We could have lived in grace and peace with you for as long as the sun endures, for as long as the moon hangs in the night sky. But we were tempted by the superficial pleasures of sin and overwhelmed with temptation's wealth of cheap gifts and thrills. The prophets were sent to tell of your gifts of joy and peace, but we listen to the world's news of success, power, and achievement. Finally, in the dark times of despair, you sent Jesus, your servant of salvation. Therefore, we will join our voices with the wise ones as well as the foolish of every time and place who forever sing your grace. Holy, 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 God of bright dawns, all creation renders tributes of praise to you. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who saves the lives of the needy. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, God of redemption, and blessed is Jesus Christ, our Savior. Overwhelmed with compassion, he left the glory of heaven so we could be set free. Overwhelmed with hope, he entered death's house to break its dark power forever. Overwhelmed with love, he traveled another road, walking to Calvary so that we might run with joy into your waiting arms. And on that night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And again, he returned thanks to you and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So as we remember Jesus' birth, as we prepare to journey with Christ this year, we speak of that mystery called faith, which is revealed to us through Christ. Christ came, the morning star of love. Christ died, the night star of salvation. Christ was raised, the radiant star of resurrection. Christ will come again, the constellation of hope. Holy One of stars and sinners, send your spirit of hope upon those gathered here and on the gifts of bread and cup, that they might make your faithful and loving children flesh and blood for all. 
feed us with the bread of hope so that when we leave, we will travel another road to defend the weak, to speak for the voiceless, to assist those cast aside. Refresh us with the sweet nectar of grace so we, overwhelmed with joy, would go forth to enter the houses of strangers in our midst, to enter the despair of the lonely and forgotten, to enter the hearts of everyone we meet. And when eternity's time begins and we are gathered around your table with friends and family we loved, with those we ignored and mistreated, with all our siblings of grace, we will lift our songs of glad joy to you, God in community, holy in one. Amen. As redeemed children of God, may we unite our voices together in offering the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The body of Christ, broken for us all, a strange mixture of saints and sinners, the beloved of God's family. The cup of grace, salvation, blessing poured out for us that we might know the forgiveness of our sins and the opportunity to begin anew in service and in love. All are welcome to receive the sacrament of Holy Communion. That means everyone is invited and everyone will be served. And it is such a joy to be in a time and in a place where none are kept away, but all are celebrated as beloved children of God. We will have a station in the center for receiving the elements for intinction. You'll be given a piece of gluten-free vegan bread, and you may dip that into the juice that has no sugar added and receive both elements at the same time as a sign of the one and only sacrifice that was needed to redeem the sins of the whole world. However, we will also have another station where there will be individually packaged juice and bread, should you desire that, as well as individually packaged gluten-free wafers and juice, should you desire that. Isn't it wonderful that God reaches to us in so many ways and that God's grace is available through any and every means of grace? So I would invite those who will be helping to serve the sacrament today to come forward. Friends, the feast is ready. Come when you are ready and receive God's grace.
Would you please unite your hearts with mine in prayer? God of light and love, we cherish this table in this season when nights are long and cold. Through this meal, the Christ has warmed our hearts. May the comfort in our souls sustain us through winter and nudge us to create a welcoming space for all of our neighbors. With gratitude, we leave here energized to kindle your love in the world. Amen. Our closing hymn today may be found in the Small Faith We Sing hymnal on page 2095, Star Child. And you are welcome to stand as we sing. seated. We have some changes in our plans for today based on the weather. So uh, we will not be having a formal fellowship time today following worship, but you are welcome to stay around and, and have some rich conversation with one another. We will also not be assembling the bag lunches for the Friendship Center and we will not be undecking the halls, um, but that will be done in the midst of the week this week. I remind you of our ongoing missions um, so that when you are out and about, you can pick up items to support the blue cabinets in the neighborhoods. That is anything that is non-perishable and non-freezable, and also the items for the village at Ithaca, um, this month, we are collecting laundry detergent and paper towels. 
Next Sunday will be Human Relations Day that always falls on the weekend of Martin Luther King Jr. weekend. And it is a day with a special offering in our denomination to help support community development programs all throughout the country. And these programs are specifically designed to help build relationships where there has been animosity and competition and to help us to live peaceably with one another. Just a reminder to start writing those devotionals to submit for this year's Lenten devotional book. I will be receiving your submissions throughout this month. And if you have any questions about that, please feel free to let me know and I will try my best to respond to your questions. And looking ahead just a little bit, not too far right now, um, January 22nd and 29th are two Monday evenings when we will be having encore sessions of our book study circle. So if you would like to be a part of that as we look at the final three essays of Alicia Elliott's A Mind Spread Out on the Ground, um, please let Karen know or myself and we will make sure that you receive the Zoom invitation so that you may um, join us for those two evenings. And just a reminder that um, during this season of passing around a variety of viruses, if you are feeling unwell, please feel free to stay home and watch our wonderful streaming service through the church's website or through Facebook Live and participate with the congregation in that way. We St. Paul's has a wonderful reputation for a lot of things. And I'm not looking forward to the day when we have a reputation for being a super spreader. So let's keep that to ourselves and be mindful of being courteous of one another and stay home when we are not well, but show up in full force when we are feeling well. Would you now receive the dismissal with blessing? Now God sends us out by a different road, so we may find those who have been left in their despair. Now Jesus walks with us down a different road, so we may serve those who are lonely and frightened. Now the Spirit illumines that different road, so we may take our siblings by the hand and walk in wonder and grace. Amen.